What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLD and FINRA Saga. And on today's video guys, I will show you the full list of our enemies. I will show you who did what and how it might affect uh, our case. On top of that, uh, I will explain you what you will do, we do with them and how all this uh, noise might be useful in our case. Then I will show you some uh, explanations from Richard Hoffman and Mark Basile in regards uh, to the recent uh, FIF uh, meeting. And at the end of this video, I will show some details in regards to the transfer and shares to ST in a physical form. So, and before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button. It is very important for me to see this support from you, from my viewers. And it takes you a split of a second of your time to hit the like button. But it takes me more than four hours on a daily basis to uh, prepare to make these uh, videos for you. That is why, guys, just hit the like button. And let's start to with the news itself. Uh, yesterday I showed you this chart. We are on uh, Google Trends and... Uh, here you can find uh, all the trends uh, that uh, are appearing right now on the internet. And here you can see the MMTLP topic. And I showed you this, that we are gaining momentum. As you can see, we have uh, movement to the upside. That is pretty much the same that we had uh, back uh, in uh, June and back in May. And this uh, also shows that uh, we are gaining momentum and this momentum might help us to solve the problem. But with this fact, uh, a lot of uh, wrongdoers are trying to push our case down. And let me show you uh, the most uh, so-called successful ones. One of them is definitely Charles Gasparino, and he tries uh, to push our case down. And uh, he is uh, the author of the recent article that was published uh, on NewYorkPost.com on February the 10th. And uh, in uh, his Twitter account, uh, he is uh, trying to consistently push our case down and he's trying to say that uh, we are, let's put it this way, not so clever if we decided to uh, invest in MMTLP. And his latest tweet uh, is uh, related to the uh, Meta Materials press release that uh, was published uh, back uh, in December, let me show you, like this. That was published back in December of uh, 2022, December the 7th. And uh, it says, uh, purchases of MMTLP executed after December the 8th, 2022 will not receive for the distribution, will not be quoted. MMTLP shares will be cancelled effective on uh, December 13, 2022. And uh, he said, uh, let me show you again his Twitter account, he said uh, that um, uh, investors who fail to read press release get their research uh, from Toots, uh, like uh, the bird lady, and don't understand T plus 2 will always suffer. And he says that uh, this press release is stated that uh, you should sell your shares before December the 8th. But definitely it is not uh, the case. It is not uh, uh, what uh, does this phrase mean. But uh, it's up to him and he is still trying to push our case down. On top of that, uh, if you take a look on this article, you can see that it is a hit piece article. And uh, in the video before my previous video, I made a detailed breakdown of this article and uh, I uh, demolished this article by several facts that uh, wasn't mentioned right here. And by the way, due diligence did the same on, uh, this, uh, on, February, sorry, on February the 10th of 2024 and you can read uh, his tweet as well. So let me show you the next person, James J. Angel. Uh, he was the first so-called helper of MMTLP community who made the presentation for Congress and uh, this presentation was again demolished uh, by our community back in May of 2023. You can find this article on linkedin.com and uh, this article is titled Open Letter to US Congress Senate and Georgetown University. Professor James Angel representation to Congress in response to the MMTLP fiasco. And this article was published by Kevin Berthold and uh, it is uh, the detailed step-by-step -step, uh, article, which uh, again demolishes uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, presentation that was made by uh, James J. Angel. On top of that, guys, we have an evidence that I showed you again just uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, uh, this tweet uh, was published by AK Dallas. And uh, let me quote to you uh, this tweet again. 
uh james angel do you care you explain your 1.1 million dollars expert witness work with sec did you get paid uh, to go to congress in 2023 to lie on behalf of finra and sec did you get paid in 2021 to get mmchlp to trade those two years account uh, for your biggest fees please advise before subpoena and here is the screenshots uh, of uh, his uh, remuneration uh, the total amount if one is 1.1 million dollars and it was split by two amounts uh, 618.5 thousand dollars and uh, 525.5 thousand dollars and uh, this is an evidence that uh, potentially uh, james j angel is a paid shill and that is why we cannot uh, rely on any information uh, from this person in regards to our case and uh, let's basically move forward Another person, Alexander Osipovich, who is working on Wall Street Journal, and uh, he published this article uh, back uh, in uh, June of uh, this year. And here is this article, uh, how the stock ticker MMTLP became an anti-Wall Street rallying cry. Individual investors are on the warpath war after bad bet on over-the-counter energy shares tooted on social media. And again, this article was demolished by our community because it is uh, full of misleading facts uh, and bold statements. That is why you cannot uh, rely on his, on this person as uh, the person with uh, any substantial amount of uh, expertise. Uh, the next, the next person is Brandon Kochkodin, and here is uh, his Twitter account, and uh, he has even uh, the. Uh, his latest article and he pinned uh, this article that was published by Forbes uh, and uh, I have to admit that it is not uh, his only article attack of naked short sellers and uh, this by the way this article was uh, highly promoted by Forbes and I showed you uh, this, this fact uh, basically a couple of videos ago on top of that in uh, my investigation I found out that potentially Forbes uh, has a Russian roots roots from Russian oligarchs and you can watch uh, another video, you will find uh, the link on this video on your top right corner. And uh, there I found out that potentially Forbes uh, is trying to demolish uh, the US stock market. This is just my opinion, but uh, facts uh, are there. Uh, again, he wrote, Brandon Kochkodin wrote another article uh, that uh, is right here. The only conspiracy theory threatening Wall Street. And this article was published on June 22nd, again, by Forbes. And uh, this article is the only line of defense in Richard Hoffman's arbitration. And uh, Richard, uh, is, if you don't know, uh, he is in the process of arbitration against uh, Fidelity. And uh, Fidelity stated that uh, because of this article that was written, as already mentioned, by Brandon Koshkodin, there is no evidence that uh, there is some kind of uh, additional number of counterfeit shares on the market. And there is no evidence that uh, there is uh, some uh, illegal activity in regards uh, to MMTLP saga. But definitely, when Richard asked about uh, the explanation, why do they use uh, this article in their uh, uh, as their line of defense, they didn't explain it and they just uh, keep silence. So, what's next? Let me show you that Richard uh, made several tweets. Uh, let me show you that uh, uh, on my previous video I showed you this fact that we found another committee that is trying to potentially make some investigations. And you can watch the video before my previous video with the tweet from Swing. But I want to pay your attention on uh, this, uh, first of all, on this tweet that was made by Curtis. These nuggets uh, from the Financial Information Forum. And uh, here is the original uh, original statement uh, that uh, the back office committee will have its next call on Tuesday, August 15 at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, the topic of uh, this uh, meeting, let me show you. Uh, Nikki Berhoff of Trade Station will discuss the recent S1 uh, filing by next bridge that would distribute non transference sub subscription rights only to holders who register their next bridge common stock directly with the company's transfer agent. And uh, on top of that, we have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, announcement, and it says SEC and FINRA examination requests uh, re relating to next bridge hydrocarbons and metamaterials. And uh, the last meeting was made on January 22nd. And Mark Basile uh, responded to this suspicious. Why wait several months from January 2024 to August to discuss anything concerning NextBridge hydrocarbons? Presuming 
they have uh, any day or authority to even comment on. Does this mean that uh, the NBHS1 is stalled until they give uh, the green light? Rights offering usually screws shorts. Something isn't right. Someone needs uh, to contact them and ask them under the, whose authority they are operating. On top of that, he wrote this. Hmm, doc request from SEC and FINRA. Were those requests uh, in uh, the form of an administrative uh, subpoena? MMTLP deserves uh, to know. But may not because those types of subpoena are usually a prerequisite uh, to an enforcement or administrative action. Was this uh, MIMA a circle the wagons MIMA need uh, more popcorn? If so, I believe Congress has the right uh, to know if and what uh, the substance is. And uh, Richard Hoffman responded to this, uh, let me show you, that would be an ideal time for a whistleblower to spill the beans and get rich. Hey, whistleblower! And uh, on top of that, he wrote this. Explain this to me. So, apparently, the SEC and FINRA have issued administrative subpoenas regarding MMTLP, but Congress, who has been stonewalled and embraced uh, by the SEC and FINRA, has not. And this is the main question, why Congress is still silent. And uh, I think uh, we have to push this case forward and potentially we are about to see some major steps uh, from Congress that potentially might be uh, might lead uh, to some kind of resolution in our case. But so far, we are still, a lot of our community members are still uh, trying to uh, send uh, their shares to AST. And let me show you just a couple of tweets. Alex J wrote this tweet 11 hours ago and Junk Savior reposted. Schwab update. I just received a call from Catherine at Schwab. She told me that the information she gave me was incorrect about being able to DRS my shares to ST. Paper certificates only. Please don't shoot the messenger. I'm just uh, as unhappy about being lied at to as you. And uh, here is another somewhere here. Yes, uh, NHL fan uh, Smashville wrote this. Since E-Trade is telling me that they cannot DRS transfer my shares to ST and can only mail me paper certs for $60, how hard is to get paper certs transferred to ST and get them in my name uh, and in book entry? And Junk Savvy responded, not hard. As soon as you receive your paper certs, contact ST and ask for instructions. But on top of that, guys, let me remind you that uh, in the statement, uh, in the Net Bridge Hydrocarbon statement, and uh, this statement you can find uh, uh, in the SEC archive. Here you can see the pure mention, let me show you the screenshot, that uh, the distribution agent will distribute our shares in book entry form, and thus we will not issue any physical stock certificates other than upon request. This means certificates are right, but not an obligation, and uh, that is why you can uh, be transferred without this uh, without uh, the physical certificates. So, I think uh, it is enough for today's video. And guys, again, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit notification bell and drop me a line in the comment section if you think my videos are valuable for you. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium.